Welcome to our video series on Advanced Features in Microsoft Word. In this video, we'll begin our exploration of tables in Word. In this video, I'm going to talk you through quite an advanced feature of Word, but also an incredibly useful feature, and that's tables. So if we go to the Table menu, and insert table, and I'll initially do this demonstration in Word 2000. You can select the number of columns in your table, and a table is basically another name for a grid. So, number of columns, let's say three columns, a number of rows, let's say eight, then fixed column width, auto is generally fine in the first place, And let's OK that. So there we go. There's our grid. It's very useful for formatting information. Just as an example, I've often seen, if people are trying to create lists, and they may say, list 1, and press tab a couple of times, then list 2, and press tab a couple of times, list 3, press tab a couple of times, list 4, then let's say, 1, 2, 3, tab, tab, 4, 5, 6, tab, tab, 7, 8, 9, tab, tab, and then let's go back to 0, 1, 2, and then press enter, 3, 4, tab, tab, and you can see where this is going, 9, 0, 1. But then, for example, if this text should become too long, some long text, it pushes the tabs across, and all the other text, and everything becomes not aligned anymore. Or even worse, I've seen some people create similar documents to this, but instead of tabs, they've used spaces. That's a very basic way of working, and also a very inaccurate way of working. If you're looking at creating a grid or list of things, then tables are very useful. For example, the same layout, effectively as a table, list 1. And actually, it's worth noting the terminology here. Each of these rectangles in the grid is called a cell, a table cell. You can use the tab button to jump to the next cell. You see, we've jumped from there, to there, and then to here, to here, and to here. As an alternative, you can just click on any of these cells. So, list 1, and list 2, list 3, and for example, we can select that, and bold it, and center it, and do the same here. Center, and bold, select it, and do it here too, then in list 1, 1, 2, 3, tab 4, 5, 6, tab 7, 8, 9, tab 1, 2, 3, and so on. And if I change this, this is being changed to long text. You see that it doesn't affect the other columns, because the text just wraps over within the cell. Then, each of the text within the cells can be formatted independently. So I can bold that as I wish, or italic this, You can also select multiple cells by clicking, holding, and dragging, like this. So you can select multiple cells or multiple rows. Also, importantly, if you hold your mouse, it's a little bit tricky, but if you hold your mouse at the top of each column, like that, it becomes a black downward arrow. So you can click and select the entire column. Or click, hold, and drag to select the entire table. You can also hold the mouse there and select entire rows. Or again, 
Click, hold, and drag to select multiple rows. Now here we have two new rows, so I can select the blank rows and edit and cut them. And they've gone to help tidy up the table. As you want, you can select the column and edit, cut the column, and it's gone. Also, one good way of adding extra rows to a table is just to click on the bottom right cell and just press Tab and it automatically adds an extra line, an extra row. And you can just keep tabbing if you wish to continue adding rows as many as you want. But let's just select them again and edit and cut them to remove them. So now let's go to Word 2003. Again, the functionality between Word 2000 and Word 2003 is incredibly similar. Table, Insert Table, and it all looks very familiar. OK, and there it is. You can select rows, you can select columns, and you can add text to each cell. So cell number one, cell number two, and so on. Then tab to jump from one to another and to add extra rows at the bottom of the table. Then, for example, let's say some document text here because I want to add another table. So again, table. Insert table, and let's say two columns and two rows. OK that. And because I've chosen fixed column width auto, you see that the table is automatically the width of the page. And you see that the columns, because there are just two columns in this instance, are 50% the width of the table. Another point worth mentioning is that you can change the width of the columns by simply holding your mouse, or first put the cursor into the table you want to make changes to, then hold the mouse over the cell divider, the column divider, and click, hold, and drag, and you can change the column width that way. You can also change the width of the table by putting your cursor on the far right edge of the table, and click, hold, and drag. And there we go. And I can do the same here if I wish. So that's how you can get started in Word 2000 and 2003, creating and working with tables, and why they can be so useful for helping with documents. You can see how helpful they can be in many aspects of creating and working with documents.